Welcome back to Real Airgun Adventures. This is just a quick, I suppose, airgun extra. And I thought I'd just talk briefly about airgun oil. Now, the thing with oil is people have different views. I know people that swear by WD-40, 3-in-1 oil, Ballastol, um, Gun X is another one. And there are many more out there. Now, I've got a, quite a simple view on the subject. My airguns are full of rubber O-rings, and they could be neoprene. They could be MDPE, I really don't know. And some of those things are very sensitive to certain compounds. And those compounds are often found in oils. On the uh, oil subject, I mean, one of the things that amazes me, WD-40, for example, only contains about 25% oil. The rest of it is something else. They're going to be solvents and other compounds. And those are the things that are going to damage a gun. For most of my guns, pure silicon oil. Nothing else in there, just pure silicon. It's not expensive. Now these little bolts come with a needle tip applicator. You can pop it in your pocket. It's clean, it's easy, and it's cheap. Now I do like Balasol, and I do use a fair bit of it. As you can see, there's not much left in there. Now Balasol itself is a strange thing. It's sort of shrouded in myth and mystery. Um, the truth is, there's not much to it. What's actually in that bottle is White mineral oil, which is basically Johnson's baby oil. It's a cheap byproduct of the petroleum industry. A lower acid, which, um, strange thing that, um, you'll find a lot of that in flaxseed oil, linseed oil, and again, it's widely used in the stock business. and has been for donkey's years. Ballastor was developed for the German army with the, the view that it could be used for metal, wood, and leather, and it can, you know, it does that very well and a whole host of other things. But all that's really in here is some cheap petroleum-based oil, some relatively cheap nut-derived or possibly olive oil-derived aloic acid. Um, it's thinned with a solvent, which is alcohol. The current um, formula loses three different types of alcohol. The original just used the one. And then it's scented. It's got a very unusual smell, and that smell is added using some essential oils. Now, I don't know what those oils are, um, and you could argue that essential oils all have therapeutic effects, but not for your gun, they don't. They just make it smell nice. So, this is what I use for the most part. This is what I use for everything. So, what's the rest of this then? Well, this is pharmaceutical grade aloic acid. This is cheap, very cheap, white mineral oil. Um, and what I do with those is I mix those together, 40, 60. I add a little bit of beeswax and a few drops of alcohol. The alcohol I use is formulator's alcohol. Again, it's cheap. You can buy it in small quantities. Um, it's about 98% proof. So don't leave the lid off, otherwise it'll all be gone. I mix that up, pop it in a glass jar in the microwave for about a minute or two, keeping a close eye on it. And what I end up with is this, which is the paste wax that I use for my stocks. So essentially I've got a Ballastol paste wax. Now it's pretty hard, but when you start to apply a little bit of heat, just with your finger, it melts very easily. It goes very soft. And you just literally apply a small amount of that to the woodwork on the gun, rub it well in, it fills the grain, it seals it, and also it waterproofs it very effectively. When you finish, you just buff it off, and if you've got a glossy stock, you'll still have a glossy stock. If you've got a matte finish stock, you'll still have a matte finish stock, but it'll be completely waterproof. If it gets wet, the water will bead and run off. Now with a traditional oiled stock, get on there, this is a fairly low satin finish at the moment, as it's still being oiled. Um, if it gets wet, the water will bead, but it will sit there. And timber, unfortunately, is a porous material. The oil goes in and fills the grain. So does the little bit of sawdust you generate while you're wire willing the whole thing off. But ultimately, it's a porous material. So if that water stays on there, or you rub it off with your sleeve and force it into the grain, it will enter the wood. 
So by adding a small amount of wax, and I really mean a small amount, it doesn't take very much at all, what you get is a completely waterproof seal, water off a duck's back, and it costs pennies. Now I've bought paste waxes in the past, quite a few. I've not really yet found one that I like, which is why I made my own, and I do like this one. It does the job, it does it really well. Um, it's so cheap to make it so easy. I get the beeswax from a friend of mine who keeps bees, but you can buy beeswax. I would recommend that you buy the more expensive beeswax, probably the one in the blocks rather than the pellets, and grate it yourself, but you can buy pellets, put them with a teaspoon. And it's something you can make, something you can use, that will enhance and protect and make your oiled stock last a lot longer. Now back onto the oil subject, I've got some Tribe gun oil over there. There's a litre of that, it's really cheap, about a tenner for that, it's good gear. But I use that very carefully on two specific guns for specific reasons. And I'll go into that on another video, I guess. But the important thing is, these are the two that I would use. Um, primarily because rubber O-rings don't like a lot of the additives in a lot of gun oils. Always best to stick with something that's tried and tested. This stuff's been around a long, long time, even before the First World War. Developed by a chemist, which is probably why it's basically quite expensive hand lotion. But it works. But this stuff, pure silicon, I believe they use it on treadmills. It's not that I own one. Um, excellent. You know, no problems at all. So that's my take on, on gun oil. And also my little tip there on making some face wax. You can make bigger quantities of this. I make it in little small tins because I hardly use any. Another tip is you can make it smell nice. If you don't want to smell of beeswax and you'd rather smell of something else, you can buy all kinds of essential oils. I would say stick to genuine essential oils. Don't buy fragrance oils. You don't know what's in them and what that's going to do. Um, Wintergreen's quite good. The only thing is, if you've gone to a great deal of trouble to dress up in your best camo and cover your gun in camouflage tape, and you're lying in the long grass waiting for your prey, you don't really want to smell like a load of flowers or a perfume factory. All you're going to do is attract bees. So if you're hunting, I probably wouldn't put anything in there other than the base ingredients. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to some comments and um, see you again soon. Bye-bye.